And we have uh, somebody else who's uh, remarkably talented as well, who's basically like the um, the Uber figure who nobody, everybody knows his name, nobody knows his face. It's Max Egan from Australia. Welcome, bro. Hey, Vinny. Nice to be on the show again, brother. Mm-mm. You know what made me want you to have you on again, mate? Yeah, well, you know, I'll um, I'll have to show my face someday, but um, yeah, it's kind of a game I'm playing, so yeah, I'm kind of winning at the moment. I like that. Yeah, well, I decided to have you on today because I was watching the uh, the news on um, I think it was on TV Three News, and they mentioned Chappelle Corby and how she's been uh, going through some real hard traumatic uh, mental problems and whatever, and uh, they want to uh, you know perhaps reduce her sentence. And in Indonesia, this only happens when the person admits to uh, guilt, which Chappelle has never admitted. But guess how they referred to Chappelle Corby? Oh, convicted drug smuggler? Chappelle yes! <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, mind control. They always do it. They, they always, it's just, um, you know, neuro-linguistic programming. That's all it is. They want you to make that association. I mean, the, 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 the unfortunate news about that is that the um, the clemency has been on the table with the president of Indonesia for actually over a year now, and uh, they're just bringing it up and making it all public now because of all the stuff that's coming out with the Expendable project. There's been a new report uh, put on uh, on the Expendable project website that, that basically blows the whole thing open. It shows that the Australian Federal Police know she's innocent. They've known she's innocent since 2005. They've just never done anything about it. And, you know, there were people who admitted to being the ones who smuggled the drugs. And the the Expendable TV, the the film Expendable, has absolutely got to so many people. There's been huge campaigns to hand this film out to everybody. I've burned literally hundreds and hundreds of copies and handed this disc out to people. And I know that other people around the country are. So, you know, you've got this stony silence from the mainstream media, not a word mentioned about all of this evidence that's come out from the expendable website which proves her innocence which shows the guilt of the politicians of the and the complicity of the australian federal police the website itself is being uh totally uh looked into and and gone through with a fine-tooth comb by the new south wales crime commission and the federal police it's all there in the records and the logs of the website you can see who's um scouring the site looking for uh, for information and we've got stony silence coming from the media and then suddenly we have this big uh, news report about clemency for Chappelle which has actually been on the table for a year but they're bringing it out now to try to you know detract people you know let let them think that uh, you know you don't have to worry about it it's all being taken care of you know I mean Chappelle's in a really bad way she, I don't even think she knows about the expendable project um, she's just in a very, very bad way in the, in the cells there. She's on medication all the time. She's been locked up there for eight oh, see, years that now. medication will, will, will kill her just as bad as the environment will. Yeah, well, that's what they want. I mean, they'd be love, they'd love it if she just sort of died in there and just the whole thing went away. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that would be the ultimate goal for them. You know what I mean? So what we have to do is keep the pressure on, keep spreading this film, keep sharing the website, expendable.tv and get the word out to everybody because just the fact that they've, they've brought this clemency out and they've made it all, all public like this now shows that they're running scared. They're absolutely terrified yeah, of the, the, uh, yeah. the timing you know, the of it suggests, that, the timing of it suggests oh, no other cause. Absolutely, mate. It's, it's damage control. That's all it is. Nothing, nothing more. So the, what, hold on a second. This means that we got them on the ropes. So just keep pushing. Well, we have it. Absolutely keep pushing. I mean, everything they're doing, Vinny, the legislation they've just brought in in New Zealand, the search and surveillance bill and all that, I mean, they're doing this, uh, these are defensive moves, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Because the truth's getting so out there to people, so they're just, they're freaking out and they're trying to lock everything down, and the quicker they lock it all down, they're making mistakes, they're waking more people up, because now the people who, who didn't even believe there was a problem are seeing things like this bill get brought in, and they're going, well, hang on a minute. Didn't we, didn't we fight a world war to prevent our governments bringing in bills like this? Wasn't that what they were doing in Germany? You Don't know? you think it's, so, it's, it's like the failure of Fabian socialism is that once it gets to the point where it starts to be exposed, it stops becoming Fabian and starts becoming fascist and straight in your face. And a, a fascist only gets exposed when it starts acting like one. 
Exactly, and so that's that's what's going on, which is causing a lot of people to wake up. And it's going to happen. I mean, the more negative they make it, the more people are going to wake up because that's just the way it works. And they're running scared, mate. The amount of legislation they've brought in and the fact of them bringing all this Chappelle clemency thing up. And I mean, they're, they're scared. They're terrified of the amount of people that are waking up to what's going on. And, you know, the expendable, the stony, the stony silence of the media is, is phenomenal. The silence is deafening, you know, because the information that's come out through expendable.tv and the, the reports that they've issued on the website, all the emails and the correspondence between the police stations, everything, it shows that the whole thing was a scam. You know, they withheld so much information from the trial and they ensured that she was convicted. It shows the media complicity. It shows everything. And there's absolute stony silence. I mean, this information is huge. And there's, it's not being reported at all on the mainstream media. Not one single word. All we hear is this plea for clemency yeah. this suggestion that clemency has now been put on the table she's going to be saved well guess what folks it's been on the table for a year and she's still in there so don't think that this is going to change anything and keep the pressure up yeah yeah exactly they try to appease us you know it's like oh we'll just give you a little bit of a scrap from the table but we'll still be here you know with, with, all, the, with all the big hams and juicy turkeys for ourselves you know Th these people are greedy what are they greedy for in this in this particular case max i mean is australia basically just kind of uh, uh offering up this girl as a sacrifice to maintain good relations with the most populous muslim nation in the world, Indonesia. Well, basically, what it was all about was to cover up the drug smuggling that happened at the airport. See, that's the thing with the whole Chappelle Corby case. If Chappelle's innocent, it, it isn't. You know, you, you can't really blame the Indonesian government. You don't know if that their policy is to impose hideous sentences upon people who bring drugs into their country. That's just what they do. So you don't take drugs into the country, and you wouldn't take drugs into the country, especially drugs that are worth. 10 times as much here as what they are there. So the issue is, how did the drugs, if they even are Chappelle's, and if they weren't Chappelle's, what were they doing in her luggage? Where did that come from? So that indicates that there's drug smuggling that goes on at Australian airports, and the Australian Federal Police are, are heavily involved in Australian airports. Sydney Airport's run by Macquarie Bank. You know, that's who owns Sydney Airport. So you've got all of these interests that that's don't a, want to uh, own. That's a good ability to money launder, don't you think, having a bank in on the oh, action? You, you think? They own the airport, mate. So, you know, you've got all of these interests that don't want the people of Australia to know that there's all of this stuff going on behind the scenes in the airports. Because there is. I mean, there was recent reports came out in the Sun Herald of, of the customs officers being accused of drug smuggling in Australian airports. Yeah, I mean, and, it's and just, the, it, I mean, the price of marijuana alone, like let's say, what four and a half kilos or something like that, was worth like forty grand in, in, in Australia, and yet she was taking it to Indonesia, where it was worth eight grand. <laughs> yeah, or even, or even less, even less. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, see, that's the problem. See, it wasn't that she was a sacrificial lamb. It's just that they needed. Uh, yeah, I mean, this, this drugs had gotten through. So they just, whoops, it's in her bag. Okay, we'll let her, let her hang for it because otherwise we have to admit that it was ours and that's going to cause an investigation into the baggage handlers and Sydney Airport, Brisbane Airport, the whole aircraft system. Oh, my God, our airports aren't secure. We're in a post-9-11 world where we've spent all this money um, supposedly securing our airports and we, we screen our passengers and put the citizens through hell and here we are having kilos and kilos of drugs They're shipped around the country. They're now realising, yeah, you know. Max, that there's no defence against an inside job. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, that, that's why Chappelle was found guilty, and that's why the government has always washed their hands of it. That's why there was such an effort uh, undertaken to smear the entire family, to make it guilt by association. Even even if her father was a pot smoker or whatever they claim he was, which which everybody says he wasn't, you know, if you, if you speak to anybody... Uh, from the family, they all say, no, no, none of this is true, and you'll find that there's no drug charges against any of these people. And yet if you speak to anybody on the street, anywhere within 100 miles of the Gold Coast, you, and you start talking to this about it, you know what they say? They say, oh, look, I knew him. I knew him. 
and and they were always into smoking pot. I go, oh, really? You know, they must have known everybody. Gee, the Chappelle, the, the Corby family must have known everybody in southeast Queensland and northern New South Wales who live within a 100-mile radius of their house. They must have been the most popular people on the planet because everybody you speak to says, I knew them, you know? <laughs> and you think... Yeah, right. Of course you do, mate. Of course you do. You know, it's unbelievable, mate. Just the mind control people are under. Oh, you know? yeah. But there's no charges. No charges has ever been brought against any of the family. So there was all of this smear campaign undertaken. But even if he was, even if he was a pot smoker or whatever he was, what's that got to do with her? You know, my, my father was an air traffic controller who was a World War I pilot. Like, should I be guilty of bombing Japan because my father was a, I mean, a World War II pilot? You know, I mean, how does this? How does it fit in? You know, if if you whatever my father did, it's got nothing to do with me, and it's the same with Chappelle Corby. Whatever her father's into, whatever her sister's into, whatever anybody that isn't her is into, it isn't anything to do with her. You know, that that that's people have this this guilt by association thing, and you know, when a smear campaign is undertaken, if it's a good enough smear campaign on the rest of the family, it's just guilt by association, and they write her off. Yeah, I mean, Australians are, are terrible like that. They'll always go into bat for the underdog, but they'll always be uh, be very very prepared to hack down the tall poppy. So you think about that. They'll bat. They'll they'll go in a bat for the underdog until he makes it. Then they want to hack down the tall poppy. It's tall poppy syndrome. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's, it's a bizarre culture. It's a cra- it's a crab in a bucket syndrome. You know, all the crabs if they work together, you know, they'd be able to get out. But instead, any time one guy gets near the edge, the others um, try to climb up him and just claw him down, and then they're all stuck again. Yeah, it's funny that, isn't yeah. it? That's that's a very good description of our whole society, really. And the, and these judges um, that, that, that they've got judging uh, Chappelle Corby, you know, wasn't wasn't he like had like four hundred cases in front of him, and every single one of them he found the person guilty? Yeah, 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 absolutely. There was three judges there as well, but I mean the whole thing was a setup. It really, really was. Um, it was a show trial. You know, they'd already, you know, smeared her and done everything they could to ensure she was convicted, and it was an absolute show trial. And because she didn't plead guilty, it was why she got 20 years. I mean, there's been people who've gone in there, one guy got caught with 161 kilos of, of pot. He was an Indonesian guy, got caught with 161 kilos of pot. He got five years in jail, right? She had 4.2 kilos, and she got 20 years. You know, because she didn't plead guilty. And she still says, you know, she won't plead guilty because she isn't guilty. You know, that's the thing. You know, if she, if she gets released without pleading guilty, then they're going to owe her so much because they've taken eight years of her life away from her. They've taken eight years of the life of an innocent woman. And how do you compensate for that? They've taken this woman off the street and they've, they've locked her into a cell and turned her insane. How do you compensate for that? She for can't have she children. Commit. She can't have children, you know, or, or, or have a life, you know. I mean, the, the, this is what she should never have a life again, mate. Yeah. She never have a life again. Even if she gets out, she'll never have a life. She'll be Chappelle Corby. Everyone's going to want to talk to her. Everyone, no one's going to leave her alone, you know. And and apart from that, she's now suffering severe mental illness because she's been locked in a tiny little cell in a jail that's designed to hold three hundred people that has over a thousand inmates. She's in there for a crime she did not commit. She's been in there for eight years. She's she's now clinically insane on medication. Doesn't know what's going on in the, in the world. What's going on with herself? And you know, how do you compensate that? You know, you can't she's reconcile not even it. She, she's not. Well, she's not even mentally competent to to plead guilty now. You know, how can she? She wouldn't even know what she was saying. So how how can she now offer her plea or change her plea to guilty when she's not? Uh, you know, she's she's been diagnosed as as clinically insane. You know, so I mean, this is what happens to you when you lock an innocent person up for so long for a crime they didn't commit. And the, the way she's just been forgotten, and you know that the the way the media is now presenting this whole clemency thing to try to take the heat off themselves, it, it's just disgusting, mate. It, it, it's absolutely disgusting. It. it it makes me ashamed to be an Australian, to be honest, to see this sort of thing going on. It's, it's be one of the biggest shames our country ever has to face, I think, the Chappelle Corby case. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes me ashamed to be called an Australian as well. <laughs>